This lesson is about vector addition. Remember that a vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction, and we've already seen that we represent these with arrows. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector, and the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector. When adding vectors, the vectors that are being added together are called components, and the vector that you end up with is called the resultant. Let's look at a case where there's zero degrees of separation between the two vectors that we're adding. So here's some object, and here are two forces acting on it. It would be easier to see the zero degrees of separation if I drew these right on top of each other, but then we wouldn't really see both vectors. I still hope you can imagine that there's zero degrees of separation between the directions that these two forces are pointing. If we combine these, we end up with a net force that is just the sum of F1 and F2. And that's what happens at zero degrees of separation. The resultant is simply the sum of the components. What's also true about zero degrees of separation is that this results in the maximum possible resultant. There's no other orientation of F1 and F2 that would give us a greater resultant. Now let's look at the opposite, 180 degrees of separation. So here's an object, again, with two forces on it. Here, I think it is more obvious that the separation is 180 degrees. Since the forces are in opposite directions, the net force is just the difference between the two forces. And that's always going to be true when the forces are 180 degrees apart. The resultant is simply the difference of the components. And 180 degrees of separation gives us the minimum possible resultant. There's no other way we could combine these two vectors and end up with a smaller resultant. Now we'll look at 90 degrees of separation. Let's imagine that this boat is trying to cross a river. It's heading north at 12 meters per second. This means that it's getting 12 meters closer to the opposite shore each second. At the same time, the river is flowing downstream toward the east at 5 meters per second. These two velocities are going to combine to give us the resultant velocity of the boat. Here's where we introduce the parallelogram method. This is a very useful and not too complicated method outlined by Isaac Newton about how to combine vectors. Here are the rules. First of all, the component vectors must originate at the same point. And you can see here they do. They both start on the boat. The next thing that you do is draw dashed lines from the tips of the arrows in order to create a parallelogram. In case you don't remember what a parallelogram is, it's a four-sided shape in which opposite sides are parallel to one another. We can draw these dashed lines to create a parallelogram. Once that's done, the resultant is just the diagonal of the parallelogram that's originating at the same point as the components. So there's our resultant. Since the two component velocities are perpendicular to one another, we end up with a couple of right triangles. This means that we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the magnitude of the resultant. So we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and plug in our 12 meters per second and our 5 meters per second, and we'll find that the resultant velocity is 13 meters per second. Finally, let's look at what happens at any other angle of separation. Well, for this, we'll also use the parallelogram method. So we want to make sure that the components originate from the same point. We want to draw dashed lines to create a parallelogram, just like that. And then we want to draw the resultant, that is, the diagonal of the parallelogram. How could we determine the magnitude of this resultant, though? It looks like one of those angles is pretty close to 90 degrees, but we can't be sure of that, so I don't think it's safe to use the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, the only way we could figure out the, the magnitude of the resultant is if we used a scale diagram. Sometimes you'll be given the scale of a diagram, other times we have to figure it out ourselves, which is what we'll do here. Let's measure the length of the 20 Newton force. It's 10 centimeters for a 20 Newton force, and we can set up a proportion. If 10 centimeters is 20 Newtons, then one centimeter is how many? Well, it would be two. This means that we think our scale is one centimeter equals two Newtons. Let's confirm that by looking at the 13 Newton force. The 13 Newton force is 6.5 centimeters long, 
And setting up a similar proportion, we once again find that the scale is one centimeter equals two newtons. Excellent. Now we can measure the length of the resultant and use that scale to determine its magnitude. It looks like that resultant is about 7.5 centimeters long. So if we set up a similar proportion, we'll find that the resultant is 15 newtons. Let's summarize. When there's zero degrees between the components, the resultant is just the sum of the components, and this is the maximum possible resultant. When there's 180 degrees between the components, the resultant is the difference of the components, and this is the minimum possible resultant. At other angles, we'll use the parallelogram method. When the angle is 90 degrees, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant. We can't use this for any other angle, so in those cases, we'll use the scale of the diagram to determine the magnitude of the resultant. 